And Steph, let me come to you on Apple. I'm just curious. You know, it's underperformed the market so far this year, up about 11 percent versus the S&P's 19 percent gain. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm market weight. It, um, to be honest with you, David, I think it's a great story, but there are like 85% of the sell side have buys on it. I think we all know about the iPhone cycle coming up. I don't think it's going to be a monster cycle. I think it will be good. We all know about services. We also know that they're buying back 90 billion in stock. What don't we know in this story, right? So, so to me, I'm market weight. I think it's more interesting this TSMC news because I own a whole bunch of the semiconductor and semicap equipment companies and talk about pricing power. Not only are they potentially going to raise it, uh, prices by 20 percent. They already raised earlier this year, actually last fall, uh, prices by 10 percent. And I think obviously they're taking advantage of the strong demand we, uh, and weak supply. But I think they're also protecting their profitability because we know they're investing $100 billion in capital improvements, right, over the next three years. So they're protecting that profitability. And by the way, others are raising prices too. UMC, Global Foundries, PSMC. So this is a trend. You want to own companies that have the price power because not only do they have to deal with the semi uh, the we have to deal with semiconductors and in general companies have to deal with the semiconductor shortage but freight costs and wage costs as well so you really want to find strong companies again with pricing power I'm just looking at the tech trade today Mike and a bit of a split so Apple's down Facebook Tesla Microsoft all under pressure Amazon though is a standout today and then you look at some of the other names that are doing well eBay is up there Etsy is yep. at the top of the S&P they're a little bit of an e-commerce bid today. A anything behind that? E-commerce and I would say lots of software outside of, uh, of Microsoft. Uh, I, I don't know that there's something in terms of thematically up there except for when it comes to Amazon. It's kind of a laggard trade. I mean, you know, Steph was talking about 85 percent of, uh, of Apple analysts have a buy. 100 percent of Amazon analysts uh, have a buy on the stock and it has done nothing in about a year. So, um, you know, it seems like it's a little bit of a, uh, you know, go to where people haven't been uh, been doing much buying lately. So, But I do think some of the smaller software names, of course, Salesforce having a good day uh, is, is probably the little sub theme that is at work, too. Yeah, Salesforce, the the outperformer in the Dow today, uh, the biggest gainer. Shares of Dollar Tree and Dollar General, though, under pressure, really has been a tale of mixed retail reports. Both of them had bottom line beats. Bertha Coombe has the details. What's behind the big falls in the stocks? Well, you know, Sarah, dollar stores face higher wage and shipping costs, just like other retailers, but they have less room to pass those costs on. Dollar Tree missing on the top line and same store sales, which fell 1.2 percent. Gross margin was in line, but the discounter warning higher shipping costs to the tune of up to $200 million in the second half will eat into profits. Dollar General beat on sales, earnings and comps, but executives also seeing supply chain headwinds continuing into next year. On staffing, Dollar General General CEO said the end of the enhanced unemployment benefits has made hiring easier, but on the other side, it has impacted sales a bit as some of their customers have now cut back. So it's kind of a mixed bag for them. Back over to you. The Coombs, Bertha, thank you. I'm watching the XRT stuff, the retail ETF, down almost 2% today. It's having a rough day. We just talked to the Abercrombie CEO, Fran Horowitz. So, you know, the stock is down more than 11 percent, and she kept saying we had a great quarter, which, which they did. If you look at the sales growth and the <laughs> profitability and their, and their estimates, and she's not seeing any kind of slowdown in the current quarter. So it, it, these, these retailers are seeing some big moves in either directions. On the other hand, we yeah, have Williams Sonoma next hour, and that stock was up like 16 percent. Right. And you also had Home Depot and Lowe's that were really very good and, and, and sold off on those great numbers. Right. You had Best Buy, really remarkable numbers. TJX, great. Burlington, not so great. Right. So Ross Store is not so great. So you have winners and you have losers. You have market share gainers and market share takers. And I would just simply say in terms of the dollar stores, like I find this action very strange today. Dollar Tree, of course, that we know that the freight costs are going to hurt them and that's why they cut numbers. But SG&A was better. Operating margins were better. In Inventories were high at 12 percent versus sales at 1 percent, but nowhere near as bad as Dollar General. Dollar General was just in line across the board, and their inventories were up 20 percent versus flat sales. So to me, I think the reactions are kind of they should be mixed. They should be reversed, quite frankly. I don't own either of them. I do, in full disclosure, own TJ and Best Buy and was very pleased with their results. But it's a stock picker's game, yeah, as you well, very well know. I will. I mean